What's going on, world? My name is Tyler. And, um... This is Nick. He's Nick. not... <laughs> yes. This is Nick. And you are listening to The Burning Ape on Hot 97.5. I don't know why I went with that, but I decided to, I mean, we might play some smooth jazz here in a moment. Um, but... I'm not above that. Smooth, that's true. smooth I mean, jazz is like point, life. No one's, no one's above smooth jazz, but ideally everyone's below smooth jazz. Yeah, that's perfect for this, <laughs> this fuck tank we're in of a, of a recording, dungeon, yeah. of a recording no, booth. It's, yeah. uh, it's the only rape dungeon on the second floor of a building. That's good, yeah. Um, yeah, right on... Right on Whatever street this is, Rape, rape Street. <laughs> All right. Speaking of Rape Street, we're gonna start today with. Uh, uh, I'm gonna introduce a beer. There's some shit. A beer. Yeah. There's, there's some is... shit floating around in this bad boy. <laughs> this is a Stone Ruination Double IPA 2.0, um, and the quote on this thing actually says, "A liquid poem to the glory of the hop," which um, all four you know poems for. Hops. What, um, what kind of poem do you think it is? I guess Ring Around the Rosie? Uh, well, there's a story on the back of the bottle, but oh, I mean, shit. I guess I don't really care about that. It's I only can't really eight read. and a half percent. Oh, Jesus, is it really? <laughs> yeah. Cheers. I should have yeah. bottle topped you. You, yeah, that great. With the with the equipment we have on the table, would have been fucking nice. Yeah. All right, let's see how this is. Oh my god, it's amazing. <laughs> All right, well, we'll be drinking that throughout the uh, our discussion today. And you understand how delicious this thing is? That is, a, it's a hoppy beer. That's phenomenal. I can I can understand the poem. It's a love poem. This is sure. delicious. Love. Like you just want to flick your tongue around with it. Uh, <laughs> what? <laughs> flick your tongue around with it? Like you and this beer are sitting in the field? You're just, ah, 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 ah. Like that's <laughs> that's all you. That's a weird. We're not like in it or like on it or all. No, no, around it. Just like, around it. Just giving the bottle a nice. Ring. No, no bottle. No, no bottle. bottle. Just the liquid. Just the li- just the liquid. <laughs> how, how are you holding the liquid? <laughs> just. Do you have a mouth? <laughs> <laughs> yes, you do. use yours for I more do. more extensive things, but that's irrelevant. Yeah, well, a lot of uh, a lot of tongue flicking. <laughs> that's right. right. <laughs> so well, we got that. We got the stone ruination. We'll uh, we'll come back to it at the end that we'll be drinking throughout. So we'll um, we'll definitely talk about that. But what we have going on. Today, on today's episode, we're going to mostly focus on football. I say that now because, uh, as you might have noticed, we're going to get fucking off track pretty heavily. Uh, but we've got a couple things to discuss. A lot of early retirements in this offseason. A lot of early retirements. What are you doing? <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> what are you doing? See, I'm trying to give the give and take, the A and B. Now I'm just allowed to sorry. give an A. I'm just giving A at this point. <laughs> you really? Yeah, no, you see. Great, let's just drink break. Uh huh. Well. <sighs> All right. There, there has been a lot of a lot of uh, off season retirements. Fucking Calvin, Calvin Mega- Johnson. Goddamn Megatron retired. Like what the Beast hell? mode. But yeah, uh, Lynch retiring. I guess that was a given. And then Peyton Manning's everyone everyone saw that. Right, the Cinderella story of him winning the Super Bowl in his last hurrah. Yeah, I like, or him. the fact that like. Half of the 49ers retired. No, I think they got incarcerated. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they either went think to jail or, 14, or retired. It was yeah, like the 49ers got. Oh man, the longest yard sequel is gonna be great. <laughs> it really is. It really is. Christ on that's right. Is Kaepernick, Kaepernick still in the in in the Bay? Isn't he? He, he is. He is. No, no, they uh, they had to keep. Him. <laughs> they're using him for. To exist, whatever it is they're using him for. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, it's uh, it's pretty much like I don't know, like how. The Niners. Oh, the fucking Niners. Well, I think we're, we're going to get to them in a minute. I don't even know. Shit, but yeah, I don't, I don't even know who's... We'll get to that event eventually, I think, maybe. Um, but yeah, fucking Calvin Johnson. How long, did he, how long did he play for? Yeah, I think he played for... Barry Sanders played for eight years, so Calvin played for the same amount of time. Was it eight years? I think he was drafted in 2007. Wasn't he drafted in 2007? He was drafted in 2007. Yeah, so he's 2007, yeah. So what, he played for, yeah, uh, nine... Nine, Nine season? Is that what we're calling it? Yeah. Well, he, no, oh, eight, eight, eight seasons. Yeah, eight seasons. So, I mean, God, he I don't know why he retired because he didn't ever fall off. Did All he? the greats in Detroit retire after eight seasons. Detroit just ruins like, just They don't ruin players, but they just take them down. That's true. It's God, he had one season, uh, t- sorry, two seasons under 1,000 yards receiving. Yeah, the, but he compensated it with the other 17,000 yards he received right, like, so after the, the, the fact. The two seasons he had under 1,000 was his first season at 756 yards. And a couple of seasons later, 984. 
<laughs> that far under a thousand. That, what, what, well, did he break the record? In, I see. Look, he broke the record in 2012 with almost 2,000 yards. So the 1,900 yard season he had in 2012. That was the season after the Madden game cover, where everybody thought you know the curse would be instilled on him and you know and things like that, and it it didn't wind up falling that way? Nope. <laughs> no, it um, did not. You put up fucking 1,900 yards in a season? And only scored five touchdowns? Are you fucking kidding me? I look at it this way. I mean, the, the last two out of three to be on the cover kind of hijacks, or, you know, destroyed that with OBJ having a good season, nice. Calvin Johnson, and then Adrian Peterson just, he got to stop beating his kids and he'll be a hype, man. I mean, or beat them harder so they don't say anything. <laughs> exactly. I don't, so well, I don't know if did, they, they didn't. He, didn't he snitch on himself with that whole thing? Though? Didn't he say he took a snitch yeah, yeah. on his kids? So I'm like, wait. Yeah, you <laughs> Hold up. Yeah. We can't do this anymore. Right? Like, wait, Calvin Johnson had rushing yards until 2012. Yeah. <laughs> 2008 was not a good rushing year for him. He had negative one yard. 07, though. 52 yards. 09, 73 yards. Shit, man. <laughs> Once you get Calvin Johnson to run it, he lost a lot of fumbles, though. Yeah. How about, how about the other bombshell of the NFL? Um, it returning $723,000 um, for... Uh, basically, it was they were given money for paid patriotism for doing the military honoring. And I, they, they had to return that money, or 7, 700000 of it, for false whatever or something along those lines. I didn't um, hear about that. That <laughs> Wow. Fucking way to go, Goodell. I mean, as a New England fan, I'm not a huge fan of Goodell right now anyway. But <laughs> that's neither here nor there. Huh. No way. Yeah. What they issued last that, New year? England was the second highest paid team out of all the beneficiaries. So, so Your shady fucking team. <laughs> so, let's see. I don't... So what? So what exactly happened for for me and the listeners who have no idea? So, blah, 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 they scored a touchdown for taxman. The four minutes were funding more than seven thousand dollars paid by the Defense Department to NFL clubs to honor. So wait, I'm more concerned with the. I mean, it's a, basically a tax break is what it is. So the Defense Department played pay. Yeah, blah, blah, the defense. If the Defense Department had a team, oh, oh man, we the Patriots would not be the biggest cheaters in the division or the the league. Um, so the Defense Department paid NFL teams to honor military service members. Okay, why do teams need to be paid for that? That seems a little fucked up. Arizona Senator John McCain. All right, yay. Um, God, that's shitty. Only $700,000? Shit, I think you find Josh Gordon more than that. <laughs> <laughs> Christ almighty. Well, Josh Gordon couldn't stop smoking the devil's lettuce. <laughs> well, then he, fa- he failed his last one for, for drinking, and that's just ridiculous. Yeah, drinking's bad. We shouldn't uh, drink. Um, uh, that, that beer grows on you. I'll, I'll give it that much. That first sip is a doozy, but, man, that grows on you. It does grow on you. Uh, uh, what's the next topic? Uh, tumor and mold. I guess. Um, um, sp- oh, this is the transition is beautiful. Speaking of drinking. Johnny Football. Holy shit. <laughs> yeah, he's... God damn. He's a train wreck. Johnny fucking Football. Hey, Manziel, here's your... Uh, here's your... Here's your NFL contract. You're playing for the Browns. Try not to drink yourself into depression. <laughs> I guess he looks like a dumpster fire right now. I, I, I saw that uh, a few minutes before we hopped on here. It was, uh, yeah, I guess he looks terrible. Like, he just dropped at least 20 pounds or so. That's... T- oh, boy. Yeah, that's... Uh, man, at least he's going down in style. Oh, he does look awful. Yeah, well, that's... What Why I'm... are you in this picture? That's... <laughs> Why... <laughs> Oh, shit. Why are you here? <laughs> oh man, we'll have to uh, we'll have to post some uh, some links somehow. I'm not sure we're gonna post a link in the podcast. I have no uh, idea either. But you're I'm pretty sure you're in this picture. <laughs> Unreal. Oh man, that yeah, Manzel. God, did yeah, he, just a dumpster fire. So man. he he did great. He did really well in college, right? I didn't. I don't really follow college ball at all, but I guess he was he was good. He was kind of the golden child until people found out he was just gold plated. <laughs> oh God, that was bad. Um, so then he added to the list of of Cleveland QB names on the jersey, which I gotta wonder how many how many names are on that jersey nowadays. Um, and for those who don't know what the jersey is. It is a jersey in a storefront in Cleveland, and I don't know the uh, the particular name of the store offhand, but they have a jersey in there that has 
um, quarterbacks that Cleveland. Oh yeah, like Tim Couch and shit like that. There's like, so many. It yeah. might have been a Couch jersey to begin with. Um, and each time Cleveland has a quarterback, they just attach. Here's a fun fact. <laughs> Um, a fun fun fact about the Browns. I can't uh, wait. Cleveland or, or took Cleveland? Tim Couch in the I think it was the 1985 NFL draft. They took him in the first round over a select star from Pittsburgh by the name of Dan Marino. Um, oh, was passed on for Tim Couch. Oh, uh, oh man, could you imagine Marino in Cleveland? I, <laughs> I mean, I guess, but yeah. So they they passed up over him. Actually, a few teams passed up over him. Elway was taken. Um, by the Broncos, and then after that, they, the few quarterbacks were taken that just were completely irrelevant, and then Marino came, wound up dropping into the Dolphins' hands. But yeah, Tim Couch was drafted over Marino, and I, I think Browns fans are still reeling from that, that decision. <laughs> I think if uh, if Marino had ever gone to Cleveland, his career now would have been what it <laughs> is what it would have been in Cleveland then. Yeah, probably. <laughs> just really not much going on. Um, so, so speaking of Marino and Miami, God, we're good at transitions and okay. segues or segues if you're reading it. Um, speaking of Manning, what we weren't talking about. <laughs> speaking of Miami, they both M things with N's. Marino, <laughs> Miami, Manning. Yeah, it's just Triple M's. Yeah. Mm. Mm-hmm. Oh, a little gay. Um, so the, the big news story that ended up not being a news story, um, that, Good old stop stop fucking with the phone. <laughs> that uh, that Manning, Mr. Omaha himself. Omaha <laughs> went and visited Miami for With uh, Papa John's pizza. Was, was, was he really with Papa John? I don't know. I it, hope so. Maybe he had uh what the hell was it? Joe Montana too with a shorts full of quarters. I, I like to think that Papa John is uh Peyton Manning's <laughs> carry-on. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. I, I really hope it is. That should but, be. So he visited Tannehill, technically. He which, visited. He technically visited Adam Gase for lunch, <laughs> uh, and Tannehill happened to be there. And Manning which, said. Now you listen here. You throw the ball this way, and the thing won't travel this way. You know, that's that's right. Draw. Apparently, um, Boomhauer was now a uh, <laughs> was a quarterback. But for those who don't know, the story that broke uh, a couple weeks ago was that Manning had a secret meeting in Miami to basically discuss football with Ryan Tannehill and the it's offensive coordinator, if I'm not mistaken, Adam Gase. Yeah. So and talk about. Um, different things with Adam Gates and Ryan Tannehill. Um, as that story kind of progressed, we found out that Manning was down there for other business and happened to be in the cafeteria at the same time as Ryan Tannehill and talked it out. So everyone who was thinking, like, oh, man, Ryan Tannehill's going to have a great mentor, everyone's just, nah, they shared a tuna sandwich. Like, that that was it. There wasn't really much of anything. So, I mean, hopefully that tuna sandwich is going um, gonna to help Tannehill Quite a bit. It will. It's tuna y and man and uh, uh, man more like manning az. <laughs> Am I right? Um, I regret my life. Uh, so that was interesting. Um, that was a, that was a big story, and then it just kind of fizzled pretty heavily when when the coach came out and just said, "Now they uh, he showed up for lunch, and that that was it." Um, and speaking, of, it's just a lot of quarterback news in the off season. Fucking Sam Bradford. <laughs> yeah, he, uh, <laughs> the demand, he wants to be, trade, to be traded, doesn't want to be traded, wants to be traded, doesn't want to be traded. I'm pretty sure now he's on the not wanted to be traded list. Right, yeah. He, uh, um, he's willing to battle against was Carson Wentz, is that his name? Yep. Um, for the quarterback position. I don't see Carson starting this year anyways. Um, I, I mean, he was really one of the better quarterbacks in the draft class of this year, considering the draft class was not deep in, in quarterbacks. Um you know, I, this this wasn't just this wasn't a very good season for them. No. But I, I do believe that that Bradford will will take the starting gig and then eventually lose it out to Wentz um, when that time comes. I like Bradford when uh, when he's on. I, I liked him in uh, in St. Louis, except he's fucking made of glass. He kind of implodes at any minute because mm-hmm. he's how many how many healthy seasons has he played? One full season, maybe now. Bradford. Yeah, I feel like he I think so. Yeah. I, the other thing I look at too is they just paid Bradford something like <clears throat> upwards of twenty million guaranteed for his his seasons in, in Eagles. You know, with the Eagles and the Eagles traded up to get. I'm pretty sure they traded up. Yeah, they traded into the second second overall slot to take Carson Wentz, which that's 
That's a big surprise because yeah, Bradford signed a, a four or a contract for two years for thirty six million, um, with twenty two of it guaranteed. And <laughs> make that money, Sammy boy. Make that totally money. Is. <laughs> don't go. Uh, don't go the Johnny Football route. It'd be okay. You might your career might tank, but hey, whatever, man. You're pocketing twenty million. You're okay. You're doing all right. Yeah, you could bench warm for more than what the backup players <laughs> right? are making. Christ Almighty. Who, so who's even in? Philly now for receivers. Who do they have? Is Vaughn still over? He take off. Uh, you know it's a good question. I don't know how dated my references are going to be. I don't really pay attention to Philly. They have Jordan Matthews. Um, Ruben Randall was okay for them. I Is believe. Jordan Matthews, the racist tight end. No, that was uh, they got rid of him. <laughs> I forget. I forget his name. Look at that, just falling into obscurity. Well, Ruben Randall played for the Giants. Um, and he signed this year with the Eagles. He um, he did okay. He was more of a you know a short yard or quick yard receiver. Um, that they Ooh, that they have. They have Aguilar too. Remember Aguilar? Yeah, yeah, they do have him. Um, I think Jordan Matthews is the biggest name out of all of them, compared to you know what he's done <clears throat> for the Eagles in in his you know two years that he's been there. Actually, this will be his second second or third season. Um. They have Brent Selleck too, so tight end yep. to make up some yardage there. I forgot they have uh, they have the spark plug there, Ryan Matthews. And, uh, actually, it was he was the original spark plug, uh, Ryan Matthews Ryan and back. Darren Sproles. They have them both. Yeah. Wow, man, that sucks. Where'd you used to play? San Diego. Where do you play now? Listen, I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> yeah, that's rough. Oh man, they're definitely rebuilding though. I mean, Selleck's probably not going to play for too much longer if I had to if I had to guess. And probably so far my favorite story um, so far in the offseason is a pretty new one. It's just a whole whirlwind of things. Um, Tampa Bay. Oh, Tampa Bay. You lovable rascal, you. Uh, they traded up in the draft to, to, to take a kicker second round. Now... That's not the part that like that's pretty funny. The fact that Tampa Bay like someone had to had to pull some shenanigans uh, in the draft and Tampa Bay did it. Uh, so th- there's a there's a legit reason for that. I mean he's a damn good kicker. So I mean by it's not even has anything to do with that. The reason they traded up and took a kicker, even though no one was going to take a kicker um, in that round, is Tampa lost two decisive games from kicking play. One against Chicago and the other or, uh, one against Houston, the other one against Her- uh, Carolina, um, in which. The missed field goals did them in. They would have won the game if they got the field goals. Um, so they they wound up taking a kicker in the second round um, to basically take this guy, uh, and they were they were eyeing him the entire time. So there was no there was no reason for them not to take him at this point. And they, they needed a kicker because I mean you can't lose two games decisively because your kicker has a shit foot. <laughs> so and the, fucking shanks it. So that by itself, I, I was pretty amused by that. But recently, within the past week or so, uh, Robert Aguayo is it Robert. Did I get the name right. Robert yes, Aguayo. Yeah. Aguayo. Guy. I don't know. I can, I, some someone might correct me on how badly I butchered that name. Um, but and he he's quoted it saying, "The coldest I've ever kicked in. I want to say it was probably about fifty degrees." All right, Bobby boy. <laughs> uh, hopefully, you can kick in the snow. Um, and I'm no uh, no meteorologist, no weather wizard, but uh, I'm pretty sure once it gets into playoff football, you're gonna be traveling somewhere that uh, <sighs> it's gonna be a little colder than 50. Uh, does it uh, in, I don't, does it get colder than 50 in Tampa? At some point, I imagine, right? Um, yeah, I mean they get the frost issues on on the oranges down there. <laughs> I know it's Man, weird. I hate frost issues on my oranges. Yeah, it kills off the well, it kills off the lion or the lion, the orange. The lions. I saw lions down here. The Man, orange those, concentration. Those, those so. Lions, those lion problems, those oranges. Shit. Dude, the lions are eating all the fucking oranges, and it's obnoxious. That's why Calvin Johnson retired. That's right. Too many oranges. Too many goddamn oranges. He's getting diabetes. That Di- <laughs> orange-induced diabetes. Mm-hmm. Motherfuckers just fought off scurvy and got diabetes. That sucks. But that'll be that'll be interesting. I mean, Tampa, if they if he misses just one kick in his first year, uh, I'm going to laugh pretty hard and hopefully just leaves to play soccer, which, I mean, a player, like one of the offseason, not even a big story, is just near and dear to my heart. Jared Hayne retired. 
The Hain plane is no longer playing in the NFL. Well, because he wanted to do the I Olympic know, rugby. I know. I did he do Olympic? I didn't see why. But That's he leave to do the I rugby. I saw he was a he was ah, he was my he was my fantasy sleeper because it was it was uh, it was great in uh, in leagues that give points for a turn yardage. The Hain plane, damn good rugby player. And he retired after one season ish. I guess I guess ish. to be expected. <laughs> God, that was a that was a fun fun ride. Um, we'll, uh, we'll 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 pause for a moment and uh, how you liking the ruination so far? It's pretty good. I'm just slow drinking it, I'm not trying to murder it. I mean, I guess you're not really not really. You're not really completed much more than me. Nope. I ain't gonna go anywhere. So, <laughs> man, this is uh, it's definitely. It's definitely a grower, not a shower. Yeah, it's a beer that's worth drinking out of a glass, though. I think the bottle is really what's depriving cool. it. That's a that's a hoppy beer. That's definitely that's make that's <laughs> see words are fucking uh-huh. tough, man. <laughs> that's the that's not making. Uh, I don't even know what words to. Christ, you said it's only eight percent or eighty five percent. It definitely doesn't. It it knows it's a strong beer, and you know it as soon as you drink it. I don't know, it's a very it's a really clear beer, though. I mean. I'm just going by laptop light at this point, but I have no idea what the color is. It's definitely at least brown because of the bottle. Um, and I guess the... So, early early thoughts on it, actually. Uh, out of 10, what would you give it? Oh, this? Yeah. We'll, we'll come back to it later, but so far... Probably an 8. It's a good IPA. Yeah, I'd say... I'm not as big a fan of IPAs as you are. I'd say... Mm, I'll say six and a half or seven. We'll see. Six and a half or seven? I'm not a huge fan. I'm not an IPA guy. We're gonna come back to it. I might. Velcro head is stupid. <laughs> it's a great. That's a great insult to lob at somebody on a podcast. No. <laughs> <clears throat> Says the Hispanic Danny Zuko from Greece. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Jesus Christ. What What are you putting in here? W, like five W thirty? Is that what you're putting in there? <laughs> oh man, fucking <clears throat> diesel oil. <laughs> Purple lightning. <laughs> diesel oil? Yeah, I forget, the, I forget the weight on that. What's diesel oil? I don't know. <laughs> I feel like you just threw two engine words together. <laughs> diesel oil. Yeah, headlight fluid. I didn't Blink, know. Blinker fluid. Blink, blink, wait, I got the halogen blinker fluid. Uh. <laughs> so... We we touched on it a li- little bit briefly, a little bit briefly earlier. Um, the the Madden cover. In the, oh, we're going back to resuming our talk. We'll go back. We went on this train wreck of beer conversation. Yeah, no, no, that, that. okay, that makes sense. I'm glad we're on the same page with this. <laughs> Jesus um, fucking Christ. Oh yeah. Um, we were we quite, we quite literally are on the same page. <laughs> yeah, we're on a laptop. You're a whore. <laughs> I don't care what they say about you. I I care what they say about me. It's uh. Word and infection of mouth. Anyway, um, Gronk on the Madden. I, this cover. was this was interesting. They didn't do a vote this year because I think what was it last year? It was Gronk versus OBJ, right? And they played so. each other like it was a it was head to head at that point. It was yeah. a fan vote. They had a whole um, a whole championship ladder. People voted, and it came down to Gronk and and somebody else. Maybe it wasn't last year. Maybe it was the year before. Um, and then this year they just said, "Hey, Gronk's the cover athlete," and. <laughs> As a New England gaming, as a New England fan and a gamer, I my immediate thought was, ah, fuck, dude already gets hurt frequently enough. Yeah, he's got that glass fucking elbow. Right? Yeah. The well, even still, this giant motherfucker still still puts a cast. On, stop! Stop fingering the foam holes. All right. Stop it. Stop it. Stop, just mm, 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 no, sir. Um, I I don't want Gronk to get hurt, or or murder anybody. I mean that the, the second part there is just a general uh, a general want and requirement of not only New England Patriot but uh, a human being. Fucking Hernandez! <laughs> God oh damn my it. God! God damn it! Hernandez! He was such a ah uh, no. Everyone's like, oh, he'll be fine. Then there was like, oh, his gum was in the car that he rented. Like Aaron. Fucking, what? Don't leave a calling card. Like, what are you doing? Yeah, that's that was pretty rough. God damn it! But fucking I, like, cotton candy bubblelicious. Well, like I talked about earlier, and even though I don't really particularly care, and I hope you know, unfortunately, that bad things happen to New England. Anyways, um, I'll get you're apologizing while talking shit. That's uh, no, that's, that's what good. I do. Um, 
when you think about the curse, you know, Calvin Johnson was okay, OBJ was okay. Adrian, I mean, he just he got caught with a stick too big, so that was that was his own fault on that. Uh, I mean, getting caught with a stick too big is generally a uh, a trademark of NFL players. Yeah, that's true. Uh, so I mean, it's <laughs> to be expected on that one. Is who knows? Maybe it works out well. Maybe it doesn't. Maybe maybe those bus crashes on the way to the stadium. Who fucking Jesus knows? Jesus Christ! <laughs> yeah, the entire bus crashes, and what happens? Gronk lifts it and fucking has a hernia. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, the, I feel like that would happen. Gronk does like some of them, either the most heroic shit, or it crashed because he was driving, <laughs> and he's fine. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> like, like Gronk driving the party bus, aka the tour bus. They just tie up the driver and toss in the back. I feel like Gronk would be the kind of guy, like on a flight to somewhere. You go, hey man, where'd Rob go? And this motherfucker's in like the the cockpit, just getting lit at this point. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, that's true. Just clam baking the fucking the pilot. Hey man, you're high and we're high. It's like you're high twice. <laughs> like, I, feel like, I don't know. I don't know. If, 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 you feel better that you get that out of the way? I, I, I don't. I uh, it's I there's there's definitely now. Uh, 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 a be a sense of uncomfortableness. Uncomfort? I'm gonna go with uncomfortableness because uh, that word in and of itself conveys the feeling that I'm feeling. <laughs> the feeling that you're feeling. Yeah, no, you, you, I feel feelings. <laughs> it's a, it's a great thing to feel feelings. Um, I just, please stop me because <laughs> I'll just keep going and it'll start making less and less sense. All right, topic change. So let's talk about, you know, we have the divisions broken down. There's eight of them, NFC East, West, North, and South, and AFC East, West, North, and South. Yes, so um, part I, one. I guess part one will be the NFC East, and I don't know why we picked the NFC East first because they're just a dumpster fire every year. Um, so it fits our first show. Our first show is also a dumpster fire. Yeah, all four teams, the Washington Redskins, the Dallas Cowboys, the New York Giants, and the Philadelphia Eagles. Um, really, only one of those teams has really done anything in the past few years, and that's being the Giants when they won the Super Bowl against New England both times. Anyways, listen. Um, you know, uh, and I guess to start off with with the the NFC East, I think the best pick out of all four teams, and I agree with most news outlets, was Ezekiel Elliott, um, running back from Ohio State, who Dallas took fourth overall um, in the first round, and it, they really they really needed a running back. It was a, a big open, gaping hole ever since Murray bolted for the Eagles uh, and now Titans. Dumb um, back. Oh, these are the Titans. Oh, yeah, yeah, he plays for the Titans now. No, I... Uh, as as much as as much as I want to dislike him because it's the popular thing to do, I was really rooting for Romo last year. He he was he came off great. Was the fee? But they went four and zero. And well, the the Dallas they went they won the NFC East last year and went twelve and four. They had a really good season. They did. I mean, or sorry, twenty fourteen, not last year. I was gonna say yeah. Then then last year they kind of they kind of went downhill pretty heavy because Romo got hurt. Yeah, um, twice <laughs> even. So he got what? <clears throat> he started the first four games. Didn't start the next four, I believe. So they went uh, four and four, I think. Uh, whatever games he didn't start, they lost. And then he came back. I, I think he got hurt in that game. He came back, and they didn't play the rest of the season. Uh, oh, I... He was doing great when he was there, though. So Dallas, you know, they have uh, they they have some holes, but I mean they have um, Des Bryant. They have yes. What the hell's their tight end's name there? Witten. Yeah, Jason Witten. God, that fossil still playing. Yeah, so they Christ have him. Almighty. The biggest thing they needed was a running back, and Elliott gives them that that running back that they need. Um, he's an amazing runner. I mean, his cuts are fantastic. He has the speed that, that you need. Um, I mean, he's not a, a super bursting of speed, but he's a power back. So, you know, he'll be able to take through those and burst through those lines. Um, and he, he's, he's also got a, a pretty good um, – Pretty good ball control, and, he, and he's good at catching, too. So a lot of play action going on there. You know, when you have Dez and Jason being tied up with, with the defense, you have an opening with, with Ezekiel who can with, just run away with it. And especially that phenomenal front line there they have in Dallas. They do have a, they do have a good one, yeah. Is it the best in the NFL? Uh, or it's, if it's not it's the best, decent. it's definitely up. Well, they. I mean, that's that they're crediting the line with DeMarco Murray's um, success Yeah, the line, the line was good. Uh, not last year, but a couple years ago. Um, that's why he kind of floundered pretty heavy in yeah. Philly because he didn't he didn't have any he didn't have a line to to, to hide behind basically. Um, although shit, they uh, 
Oh, I forgot. Yeah, they took DMC and made them good again. Mm -hmm. Come on now. <laughs> That's the line. Because <laughs> DMC can run, but it needs the good line to be behind. So, and especially when someone started off great in Oakland. Fuck <laughs> in Oakland. Um, didn't do so hot in Oakland. Fuck <laughs> in Oakland. And then <laughs> got to Dallas and actually did pretty well. They, what, finished finished ninth in the NFL with Darren McFadden as the lead back? Shit, man. <clears throat> Yeah, no, I'm thinking. I hope. I like. I hope Dallas is the well, is the I mean, go-to team. The other thing I look at too is so the other round one pick is going to be Carson Wentz from. That's kind of uh, another big name is the one that went to Eagles as we talked about earlier. And I, mm. I, I don't know about this one considering you just gave Sam Bradford twenty two million dollars um, <laughs> to just fucking sit there in the back. Way to go, I, Philly. I, I don't. I see him red shirting. Um, this year and kind of getting the ropes and then either the second or third year they throw him in there um, barring any unforeseen injuries like Sam Bradford's glass shoulder um, you know we'll, we'll see what happens there so I, I think that was another another decent pick um, for the for the first you know first picks so Dallas and Eagle at one and four mm -hmm. um, I think overall I'd have to say, Dallas had a good pick where they took Ezekiel Elliott in the first. In the second round, they took Jalen Smith, who was an incredible outside linebacker um, for um, for Notre Dame. Uh, and I, I, he did have his ACL tears you know, in January, which would kind of hold him back a little bit. I don't see him playing this year, but I do see him playing next year. Um, you know, Malik Collins, Charles Tapper, Dak Prescott, which was another weird pick, but I guess Dallas was really looking to get a quarterback, so they took Dak Prescott in the uh, – the fourth round with 135th pick um, to get some kind of backup for uh, Tony Romo in case any injury would happen. <laughs> you know, say, so, so last year they went 4-12. and 12. I'll, I'll give you a quick guess as to how many games Romo started. Four? Four. Romo started four games and broke his collarbone, what, twice? Yeah, well, and the first one, the doctor's like, you shouldn't play. And he goes, oh, fuck you guys, I'm going to play. I'm going to go back. I'm going to go back and play. And then, fuck. Six plays in, fucking broken. Oh, God. So he started four games, and whatever their nightmare of a backup was, didn't get them, didn't get shit done the rest of the season. Um, yeah. Now, the, I think the whole division is going to be really interesting um, with, uh, fuck, what's his name? Like, their quarterback there. I forget the... Uh, Kirk Cousins, the Mister. Did you like that? <laughs> the fucking... Well, I mean, so actually speaking of that with Kirk Cousins, if we jump into the Washington Redskins, um, they probably out of all three teams or all four teams in that division had the most well-rounded draft. Um, and because they, they couldn't sign free agents, because they signed. Well, they took Josh Doxson, who was a wide receiver out of. Uh, Texas Christian, mm -hmm. who is just an awesome playmaker. I mean, he has. Awesome ball skills, can dominate the red zone, get those touchdowns they need. Uh, they also took, I think it was Sua Cravens, um, the outside linebacker slash strong safety. Oh, uh, shit. So the guy's a multi-purpose, and he was rated, and this was the best reason why I'm proud that uh, the Redskins took him, is Sue Cra or Sua Cravens, um, the strong safety is compared to one of the best safeties that I think at Washington ever had. One of them. I wouldn't say the greatest, but one of them. And Sean Taylor, who used to just blow people up in between the hash marks. Yeah, that's, um, a, that's a good combo. An outside yeah. linebacker and a strong safety. That's a tight end's nightmare. Yeah, I mean, they, they took a well-rounded draft. They took Kendall Fuller, who was a cornerback. Um, they took a defensive tackle. They took another quarterback, obviously for backup support, an inside linebacker yeah. and a running back. Um, but, I mean, their their draft overall was pretty well bodied, um, and they were already a contender to begin with once Kirk got his shit dialed in, mm -hmm. which is scary. Yeah, um, that's, uh, I, the whole division, I think, is good. I, ideally, on paper right now, mm -hmm. the whole NFC East seems like it's going to be pretty close. I mean, I'm not too pleased with, like, the Giants. The Giants took 10th overall. They took Eli Apple, the cornerback. Um, they needed cornerback help, um, and I, which is weird. He, I think this is, like, the fourth cornerback the Giants have taken in the last 10 years. For some reason, they like defensive backs. I don't know why. Um, he's fast. He's got great ball skills. Um, I mean, he, he basically is, like... <clears throat> The epitome of, of a cornerback. He's what you want when you see a cornerback when you talk about Eli Apple. Um, top 10 talent during his time at Ohio State. We're talking top 10 through all college football. Uh, the dude was a ball hawk. 
Um, he's very good at from a, being basically a, a, a capable of ascending from a nickel to a full time starting slot. Mm-hmm. So nickel corner. Um, I don't know about some of the other par- picks like Sterling Shepard, who's a wide receiver. He, I mean, he's the probably the pro most pro ready, like they say, slot receiver. But I don't know how how much I can agree with that statement. And then they took a few other people that are really just irrelevant. Uh, and then the the Eagles picks are just other than I mean even Carson Wentz was a head scratcher. They took an offensive guard um, in the third round because they got rid of all their picks in the second round. Um, I think the Eagles are going to struggle the most this year out of those three teams. Um, I think we're going to be seeing Dallas and Washington fight for that NFC East title um, come what December is when the playoffs begin. So come December. Yeah, no, I uh, so we're January, December into January. I forgot Chip Kelly got ousted from Philly. Now he's the Niners. Good job. Um, yeah, but I don't know. I think uh, I think it'll be it'll be close. I mean, uh, if Eli, I give credit to this is for the first time in a long time, Jerry Jones took what the drafted what the Cowboys need. Not what they wanted, um, and he had a really bad habit of, of drafting being, what they wanted. Being a kid in a candy store, like yeah. I got money, you come over here. He like he also liked Johnny Football, so I'm not sure. <laughs> so that's that's a solid way to go. Um, fuck yeah, I forgot uh, the Giants still have Mr. Clubhand over there, Mr. Jason Pierre-Paul, who uh, held onto a firecracker and exploded half his hand. Oh, Ooh. Jesus, that dumpster fire, too. And he, uh, he signed a one-year deal to stay with the team. My favorite thing is, like, he kept saying, no, 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 my hand's fine, my hand's fine. Last year, during, during all through training camp, and the last day he had to sign, he's like, here it is, sign the contract, I'm out with my other hand, because, you know, missing three fingers? Thumb, part of his thumb and something like that, I'm Missing yeah. a couple. He's definitely definitely all fucked up. Like, I don't know. I, I cannot wait to see the super slow-mo footage of someone just threading a pass Right where some of his fingers would have been, which will be great, is to see like Mr. Quasimodo hand just trying to fucking slap a pass down. And he just can't because I swear there used to be fingers there. God. Well, he played last year, didn't he? No, he didn't. I don't think so. If he did, he didn't play well, or he did. I don't know. <laughs> I'm pretty sure he did okay last year. Did he? I didn't think he played. <laughs> if you Google Jason Pierre-Paul, by the way, the second oh, thing he, that yeah, comes he played up, eight games. He had one sack and eight pass defenses, or six pass defenses. That's not not Great. terrible considering he had six pass defenses his entire 2014. He's pass defending with half a hand. Okay. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that's, that's true. Um, but, I mean, it doesn't sound like a great season anyway, like regardless. He's a, he's a defensive end, right? Uh, yeah. How many tackles did he have? At least? I mean, I guess a 26. lot of it, like a lot of it is uh, twenty six and eight games, mm-hmm. three tackles per game. I mean, a lot of it is is intangible stuff that's not going to be on a stat sheet anyway. It's going to be um, how well he gets in there and disrupts the whole play anyway. So if he pushes the lineman back or whatever, but I mean, still, <laughs> those numbers aren't great. Three tackles per game. His hand looked like a chicken wing that wasn't eaten properly. That's true. Like, if he had to draw, like, a hand turkey, it would look more like a camel at this point, I think. Yeah, man. It, or, it's not not a good sight. That's or a camel with no legs. A camel with... Yeah, no, that's... Uh, Basically a dolphin. That's just a, that's just a, a manatee with tumors at that point. Yeah. <laughs> a fat dolphin. Yeah, it's, uh, let's see, what's it, Jason. Let's make fun of this man's hand for a minute, shall we? Because he's not going through enough shit. Oh, God. All right, uh, just, oh, jeez, nobody Google uh, Jason Pierre-Paul's hand. I mean, I, to be fair, I guess that he's missing, so he's missing a finger. I think he's missing a finger. His thumb is awfully stubbly, but with the... the Why st- does his ring finger look like he stuffed it in a milk dud? <laughs> I don't look like he just kind of, like, I don't know, he's like he put his, he got his finger stuck in a vacuum and just, like, inflated. Yeah, that's weird. Although, I mean, he's missing a finger, but the size difference... It'll be fine. He's gonna bat that thing down. He's not even gonna realize there's a football hitting it. Yeah. God, if he shakes someone's hand, they they a lot of things happen, which include them crying, peeing their pants, and he just breaks their hand on contact. That's like good lord. Sweet Jesus, does he have a wife? I hope not. He's gonna just That's why his finger's swollen, because the ring is stuck. Oh ooh. Well, I mean, God, if he He's gonna finger that poor woman to death. Good lord. That is just that's a problem. 
I mean, I, I guess if, if she's pregnant, he could reach in there no problem. Oh, my God. Oh, that's way worse. Why does his finger look like Admiral Akbar? Look at that. <laughs> it <laughs> like, does. It does not stop smiling. Or Stavi from The Ringer. <laughs> he just plucks the flowers. <laughs> like, I don't... God damn, man. Not to be a lesson to all of you. Don't f don't blow up your hand <laughs> on a firework. And good, he's going to do sock puppets in the NFL. Perfect. Look at that thing. It looks like a boxing glove. <laughs> Looks about to do a round with Mike Tyson. That's, that's great. It looks like he just fucking, he's ready to move and wrapped up one of his mugs. It, Tyson bought a, a bit off his fingers. <laughs> Look, King Tut's back and he's in the NFL. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. All right. So I think. Yeah, so anyways, do um, <laughs> you have any of your final beer review thoughts for this uh, lovely ruination from Stone? It's a, a bit stronger than I prefer. I didn't realize you were a bitch. You can kindly go fuck yourself, sir. Um, I'll I'll say I'll give it a seven. It's, it's growing on me. A fucking seven. You, you, your parents didn't like you, did they? Well, that's uh, they they. I mean, they certainly didn't give me IPAs as a youngster. They probably should have. Yeah, I know. But well, oh, okay. So yeah, now you're 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 getting some uh, some reviews. some support. Yes, yeah, getting support. some support. Listen, motherfucker, it's a review, not a quiz, okay? <laughs> I'm saying how I like it. I'm giving it a 7 out of 10. What say you, sir? What say oh, you? he's easily a, a, an 8 out of 10. Um, it's a good IPA, good flavor. It's good if you like IPAs. It's a bit strong of an IPA for me. Um, I realize you're a bitch, though. Well, we can uh, we can discuss my bitchiness and further beers um, on the next episode. You, of, your vagina. Of the burn. Well, I mean, I like to feel wanted, and I, I am. I sometimes I am warm. Wish it, me. want it, love it. Is that Brian's book from Family Guy. I don't know. I don't. I don't, know I don't. I don't. I don't generally pride myself on knowing fictional self-help books. <laughs> <laughs> However, we will. That we talking football next episode? Do we know what we're talking about? Not yet? a clue. We're gonna not a fucking clue. We'll see what happens. Maybe we'll get some hate mail. Um, yeah, to the address we don't have. Yeah, yeah to, the, good. The, to the hate mail. If, if we if we get hate mail, they really hate us because yeah. they found out how to find us. I mean, us. if if this gets broadcast enough and somebody wants to send us a topic, it's theburningape at gmail.com. Cool. I didn't even remember that. So, yeah. so that. we can we can send that email address. So theburningape at gmail.com. You can also find us on Twitter at theburningape um, and Instagram at theburningape, you know, to check out all You're our... Say, Nick, I'm seeing a trend here. <laughs> yeah, it's our social media stuff. Branding, yay. So, with that being said, my name's Tyler. Uh, me amo Nick. Oh, God damn it! All right, and this has been The Burning Ape. Bye. <laughs> See you later. <laughs>